Hello everyone, in this video I will be showing how to set up CircleCI for your Python project. In my case it will be Cube Library, which is one of my repositories that I'm working on, and it's a robot framework library for testing Kubernetes cluster. It consists of source folder, some unit tests and uh, test cases examples, which are executed on Kubernetes cluster, but I will not be covering the last part uh, here, it's a little bit more complicated and I have already created a separate article about uh, K3D Orb that is like the heart of this uh, part. So it's best to either go to my blog directly and look for K3D on CircleCI post, or you can check out the repository directly, the complete uh, CI should be already there. Okay, to start building anything on your repository, you need to first go to circleci.com, uh, log in with your GitHub account, approve authorization for circleci, and you should be all set up. Uh, now you can see all your projects from GitHub and you need to just set up a project for your existing repository. I will be not using any of those templates here, I would rather just uh, create it myself and start building. So well, as expected we can see that the CircleCI config is missing, but we will fix it right away. So I already created the separate branch for CircleCI demo and I will create the config for CircleCI. First the folder and the YAML with the definition. First I will find a version for this configuration and we will start with workflow. You can just create a first main workflow uh, with some jobs and the first job would be just build and test. So we want to put everything together and run some unit tests and the definition of the job itself, we can put it in the separate place. Just copy paste the name. And we can define the executor. So the executor is just the environment where the build will be running. Uh, in my case it will be Docker container and it will be nice to have the Python in this container. Fortunately, it's quite easy to use existing executors, especially if we start to use uh, orbs. You can go to the orb registry in CircleCI and find your own orb if you need something uh, different. I'll be just using Python orb, but in different version. Why different version? Simply because the latest ones uh, didn't work for me, I found the other versions uh, just kind of more stable. Now that we imported Python orb into our CI definition, we can use parts of it in the job definition. So I will use Python default executor. And we can start uh, creating steps for our first job. First one would be the checkout, so just getting the repository in place. Then we will install Python dependencies, so basically using requirements file. And then running Python tests. In my case, those are unit tests. This is exactly what is used by default Python test command. So again, install depths will install the requirements for from this file. And then Python test will run the test from test directory. Fortunately, I have a init by there, so it, it should be discovered without problem. So let's now commit the changes into repository and we should see our first build running in CircleCI. You can go to the build itself and just see how the build environment is prepared. I just made it a little bit quicker, save your time. Those are the dependencies that are installed. And the test part failed. And the problem is that uh, unit test didn't find the main source. So what we can do is to add environment variable and define the Python path.
and include the source folder there. So our tower target module is in the src folder. And let's quickly commit the changes again and find out what happens now. And this time everything is fine, all the tests were executed and they are passed. So one thing that is a bit problematic is that the dependencies are always installed from scratch. So even though we are using the same things, it takes some time to install it over and over again. So what we can do is to use Python cache. So first so we will load cache and then save it after the dependencies are installed. This way we should save some time installing the same things again. Let's uh, try it out in CircleCI. Well, the first steps uh, goes exactly the same. And we still had dependencies installed, simply because it's the first run when we are using cache. Now if we try to run it once again, it should already save us some time. And as you can see the last time it was 12 seconds, now the install dependencies takes exactly one second. Of course we need some time for restoring cache, but still it's uh, much better than we had. Let's now go back to the CI definition and add another job. This time it will be uh, linting and coverage. So we want to check uh, style of our code and uh, check how good are our tests. So the header part would be pretty the same. Still we need a Python path and a checkout step. We can also copy the, the dependencies part that we just changed. And this time we will be running uh, some custom command. So the first part will be linter. And I will be using flake for this job. So I will run on source folder and also on tests. And another part is the coverage. This consists of two parts, uh, coverage run and coverage report. Uh, it doesn't have any additional parameters, I will place them in a coverage RC. First, I need to add the dependencies for the tools I will be using now. And then coverage RC to find all the needed parameters. First for the run. I will be using unit test, as you already know. And I also need to define source for the, for the coverage, it will be just a SRC folder. And now let's just commit all the changes to the repository. And in CircleCI we can see another job being executed in parallel and it failed. The problem seems to be with the line length. We can fix it just by editing the flake configuration. I'd like to put a little higher limit on that. Let's create flake configuration file. Uh, 
the display header is, is needed. And here we can define max line length to 160 characters. Quickly applying the changes to the repo. And we should see our builds all green. See, in linter we don't uh, have any errors anymore, and in coverage part uh, there is a report visible, and as you can see there is a 67% coverage. It would be nice to actually make a threshold for it, because for now it's uh, just uh, reporting what's, what's there, but it will not fail if the coverage change. Uh, what we can do is to set this threshold for coverage, so that if the coverage drops be below the 67%, it will fail. Let's quickly switch to VS Code and add the report part to the coverage RC. So we want to report fail under 67. I'm not expecting any failures here, but uh, we can just verify if the build is passing. One more thing that we can do in the CI is to automate the publishing to Python uh, package index. We'll call the name publish to PyPI. And again, we can reuse the executor environment and uh, checkout step but we need to run some custom commands. First thing would be to uh, just install the wine. It will be used to send our package to, to the server. The first step is just build the package using setup.py. And then upload it to the target server using twine. So just for the purpose of demo, I will use the test server because I, I really want to show you how, how this works and I don't want to mess with, with the existing versions. The steps are here, but the missing part is to define the user and password. And to do that, we need to add some environment variables in our project. This will define the twine user and twine password. So fine username will be just token. And for the passwords, uh, we will use the generated API key. Just, so just go to account settings. And then you can add API to You can call it just RFQP library and scope it to the, this particular package. I secretly copied the token and just paste it here. And we should be good to go with the publishing. We could tweak the publishing a little bit by doing some additional steps in config. 
first of all, uh, it would be nice to define that to reach the publishing job, we need to first uh, pass the build and test and linting and coverage. And this way it will work as a gate before publishing the package. And it also would be nice to execute the publishing only when the release happens. So uh, on GitHub when you are releasing your project, it will tag the master branch. And this is exactly what we want to catch here and it will trigger the publish. So we need to first define that uh, it should happen only for tags. But by default CircleCI includes all the commits from all the branches and ignores all the tags. So we need to change that uh, and in our case we need to ignore all the branches and just uh, make it work or tax starting with letter V. And because we uh, just defined that the publishing requires the two previous jobs to be executed, we need to also make them running for tax. Let's quickly apply the changes and see the new build running in the CI. It's a bit scary to publish the package whenever the new tag is, is published. So what we can do is to add additional check, which will just verify if the given tag is matching the one from uh, setup by and, uh, and the new version was also described in changelog. And to do that I will simply grab the both files. If that uh, given tag won't be found there, the step will fail. Well, I want to show you how it works, so I need to make those changes in the changelog and set up pi. To match the attack, I will be pushing in a second. This change will imitate uh, just regular commit. Meanwhile, I did a little mistake. I forgot the pipeline after the command, uh, which uh, made one of the builds fail. So I will quickly add it and apply the changes once again. And now I can add the tag to the latest commit and push it. And as you can see now we have three jobs in the queue and the third one is starting only after the first two are finished. And the publishing is also done. And we should see the package published.
and it's there. One last thing I wanted to show you are the badges. Uh, so those are like the little shields that you put in your readme. And uh, they are like quickly showing some basic information about your project, like the version, uh, license, uh, status of the uh, pipeline and so on. I will start with Circle CI badge, this is pretty simple, uh, just go to the adding status badges uh, page and you can find some templates there. You need to just copy them and place readme. My organization name is DevOps Spiral. My account is on GitHub. And project name is the Cube Library. And as a link, I will just uh, put the URL to the pipelines of Cube Library project. and we can quickly try it out. It's failing currently because uh, the batch is generated for the master branch, so let's set it to this particular branch to see it passing. We can now try if the link is uh, working. And we can start adding more badges from Shields.io. First it will be the license. You can reuse the PyPI badge for that. And you just need to put the project name as a reference. I would also like to have a version in my readme. So pretty similar as the previous step. Just typing the project name is all that is needed. And the last one would be just a custom badge for having a link to the Slack channel we are using. The name will be just Slack and then I will place like the channel name after the workspace. And let's make it blue. And this time I'm placing the badge inside the visible part of the link and the link is URL to the Slack channel. And this is how it looks like with everything in place. Thanks for watching. If you like to see the definition of this uh, pipeline, just visit my GitHub account or you can go directly to the kube library. There will be a CI definition with additional Kubernetes cluster created for, for the tests.